All right, so what we wanna do now is show a number of examples of the multivariate change of variables formula. And we're gonna start with the with a um, an example involving the normal distribution. So, so our first example involves normal random variables. So we're gonna let X1 and X2 be independent standard Gaussians. Independent normal zero one. And we're gonna define ran random variables Y1 and Y2 as follows. We're gonna define, first of all, Y1 is gonna be defined as R, okay, which is square root of x1 squared plus x2 squared and y2. So what are we doing here? Well, what is x1 and x2? x1, x2 is a point in two-dimensional space, right? So this is x1, x2. And What's another way that we can represent that point? Another way to represent that point is first by, okay, how far is it from the origin? That's going to be defined as R. That's square root of X1 squared plus X2 squared. And then what's the angle? A. Okay, so A, the angle in terms of X1 and X2, this is the angle from the point one zero to x one x two okay so what is the joint distribution so that's the question what is the joint distribution of r and a All right, so let's take a value R and an angle. Angle can be anything from zero to two pi non-inclusive, right? Then the unique solution, how do we define the unique solution? To our definition where R is square root x1 squared plus x2 squared, and a is the angle from 1, 0 to x1, x2. Well, if we know what r and a is, we can identify x1 and x2. How do we do it? Well, we know what r and a is, then what is x1? x1 is radius times cosine of a, x2 is radius times sine of a. That's, that's how it works. So x1 is r cos a, and x2 is r sine of a. Okay. So then we can apply the change of variables formula. This x1, right, is, these are the functions h, right? This is h1, and this is h2 in the above. So we apply the change of variables formula. And what we get is the joint density right, times the Jacobian, dx1 dr, dx1 da, dx2 dr, 
dx to dA. Okay. Well, joint density of x1, x2, well, that's that's independent normal zero one, but we have to plug in the values given here for x1 and x2. Okay, so this is one over square root two pi e to the minus x1 squared over two, one over square root two pi e to the minus x2 squared over two. Okay, and now times the absolute value of the determinant of what? Well, what's the matrix? The determinant of dx1 dr, right? We can just work it out over here. dx1 dr is cosine of a dx1 dA is minus R sine of A, right? And so on, right? So cosine of A minus R sine of A. dx2 dR is sine of A. dx2 dA is R cosine of A. Well now up here in, in the X's we wanna we wanna plug in the expression of for X in terms of Y or in terms of R and A, right? So it's one over two pi is what we're left with. E to the minus, well we have R cosine a squared plus put this in parentheses r sine of a squared all divided by two. The determinant is the determinant of a two by two matrix, right? Determinant of a, b, c, and d is AD minus BC, right? So this is absolute value of R cosine squared A plus R sine squared A. Okay, and remember that sine squared A plus cosine squared A is one for any angle A. So what are we left with? We are left with one over two pi e to the minus r squared over two times r, provided that r is anything from zero to infinity, a is anything from zero to two pi. So what do we have? Well, what does this look like? This looks like what we've already seen this times this. We have a function of R. And we have a function of A. Right? So what we have, what we can pull out of this is FRR is equal to R e to the minus R squared over 2 for values of R 0 to infinity. And a is one over two pi for values of A between zero and two pi. This is why having those indicators is very important. And so what do we get from this is we get that R is from the Rally distribution, the standard Rally, which we've seen before. A is uniform, so the angle is uniform from zero to two pi. And because we 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 have expressed the uh, joint density as a product, R is independent of A. Okay, so that's our first application of the 
five area change of variables formula. Um, what does this example tell us? Well, further example, so exam further example involving the bivariate normal distribution is that if x1 and x2 are independent normal 0, 1, and let's say we define a and b to be real numbers such that a squared plus b squared is equal to 1, okay? And then we define Z1 as A times X1 plus B times X2, Z2 as minus B times X1 plus A times X2. Then for any values of Z1 and Z2, how do we solve the system? A, X1 plus B, X2 minus B, X1 plus A, X2. This gets solved. I'm moving fast because you should be able to fill in the details, right? So this is this is a two 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 equations, two unknowns. AZ1 minus BZ2, BZ1 plus AZ2. And note that X1 squared plus X2 squared by our definition is equal to Z1 squared plus Z2 squared. So then what do we get from this when we use the change of variables formula, right? We have to plug in fx1, x2 times absolute value of the determinant, dx1, dz1, dx1, dz2 dx2, dz1, dx2, dz2. One over two pi, e to the minus z1 plus z2 squared over two. In other words, the, distri the distribution Z1, Z2 are independent normal zero one. So we haven't done anything of any significance. Really all we've done is we've taken X1 and X2 and we've rotated it around the circle. Right, so what we're doing in this transformation is we're taking, let's say a value here, x1, x2, and whatever circle that is on, okay? So that's gonna be on some circle centered on zero. This transformation is, is taking x1, x2, to some other random point on the circle. But it's not changing the relative configuration, right? All it's doing is rotating and it's doing it in a way that preserves independence. So interesting property of the normal distribution there where we do a, a certain type of a rotation and we don't affect the distribution.